Speaking of champions of free speech, warriors of in the trenches of anti-woke, our friends at the Daily Wire have been making some waves this week by uh, canceling Candace Owens, although they probably wouldn't put it that way. And um, they're really going out of their way with sophistry. They are laying on the uh, the contorted logic arguments very heavy. So Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin uh, got together to explain why what they did to Candace Owens is different from what they've been complaining about for many, many years now. Tunnel talk with right, so Dave Rubin, Rubin and Ben Shapiro. Yeah, <laughs> tunnel talk. Tunnel talk. <laughs> All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said, I you, won't talk about don't that. Yeah, talk I'll about say that it. here too. I, I yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents and we've all done a million things together in public events and networks and all those things. It seems to me that at this moment, she's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where which I created and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of just sort of where it's at now? She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do and, whatever she wants to do, to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like The Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. It's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. Now, the Daily Wire would not have a host would not pay a host who was staunchly pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. They'd have no obligation to pay a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and the, but you know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher. That means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, it's not really open for discussion at this point. Do, uh, does it surprise you that so many people, even on our side of this, are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture? Like severing a business tie, as long as you're not throwing someone in jail, and they're able to be everywhere else is not. Uh, I'm not super culture, surprised at the controversy, yeah. honestly, because to, to a certain extent, I think that there's been a, a reaction on the right to the excesses of the left. So because what the left did is they said that the Overton window ought to be closed so tight that no one can get inside the Overton window. Basically, if you're to the right of Hillary Clinton, you can't be allowed inside Welcome the Overton to my window. World, yes, exactly. <laughs> and and not just with regard to platforms, but with regard to publishers. So for example, this week NBC News deciding that Rana McDaniel was too much for them. Rana right. McDaniel can't work at NBC News. The sacred halls of NBC News must not be sullied by the former head of the RNC. Jen Psaki, however, can have a show on MSNBC despite being the press secretary for the White House five seconds ago. Right? The 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 right's response to that is I think correct to say you guys have shut the Overton window too tight, but I think some elements of the right have basically said there is no Overton window. The Overton window should be completely exploded with regard not just to platforms, with which I kind of agree, but with regard to publishers. So NBC News not only has an obligation to hire Rana McDaniel, NBC News has the obligation to hire Alex Jones, for example. Right, I, which, I don't which think just that's makes true. no sense at a business level beyond beyond free speech. I mean, there's a reason that networks exist. It, it, Right, they have, editor they have editorial yeah. positions. Yeah. Daily Wire has a very strong editorial position on a wide variety of, of issues. And by the way, I should say that, you know, there are a lot of people who are suggesting this is about disagreements over Israel. I mean, I can safely say it is not about disagreements over Israel to the extent that without reference to Candace at all here, Matt Walsh has taken the position that America ought not be involved in the Middle East at all. Matt Walsh's position, so far as I understand it, and I've talked to him about it, is that Israel, in a conflict between Israel and Hamas, Israel is obviously a more moral party than the genocidal terrorist group Hamas, but also it's very far away. He doesn't care and it doesn't involve America. That's just a pure isolationist position. I disagree with it. I think it's wrong. I think that, that it's short-sighted. But again, he's on our platform. That, that is well within the range of acceptable discourse at the Daily Wire. 
So you know, the, the notion that you have to mirror my exact perspectives on, on what Israel is doing in Gaza is obviously not true based on the roster of hosts that we, that we currently have. There are a lot of other factors, obviously, at play. Right. So actually, let's connect that to something else going on that we did. Oh, wow. <laughs> where, where to even where to even begin with this? Um, OK, for one thing, his, his overall construction here that it's not a platform, it's a publisher. Agreed. But it is a publisher that has largely built its brand around not being like other publishers in that it is not going to drive people out for a difference of opinion. Now, if over the past several years, when Barry Weiss leaves the New York Times, you had not attacked the New York Times as canceling Barry Weiss, and there are many other examples, then there'd be no hypocrisy here. But not only have you done so, you have literally built your brand around attacking other publishers, not platforms, publishers, who drive people out for lack of orthodoxy. It, it, bringing up Ronna McDaniel, who has been a defender of Trump's claims that the election was stolen. Well, certainly at MSNBC, which is basically the church of liberalism, that is as great an offense as it is at the Daily Wire, a place run by a bunch of fanatically Zionist Jews to appeal to Christians who think Jews need to be in Israel as Jesus bait. Um, that is an equal offense, and they were equally within their rights to get rid of Ronna McDaniel by your logic. Uh, Keaton? Yes, they, they, they distinguish between platform and publisher at their convenience. At their convenience, right. yes. Um, when that song, what was the song about shooting the black kids who stole chips from the store? Try that in a small town. Was that it? Yes, right, the yes, real yes. crazy song. Right, that song, uh, Country Music TV uh, didn't want to put that video on their channel. Now, they exercise some editorial right. control. They're a they curate They're a videos. They're a publisher. They are not a platform. If they decide they don't want to show that video, they're within their rights. But that's cancel culture, according to these types, right? right? right. Whenever a conservative loses a book deal, right? That's cancel culture, even though in there you're literally talking about a publisher, right? Making a call which books they want they they, they want to put out and which which ones they want to pass on. So yeah, I mean, uh, they, like I said, uh, choose to distinguish publisher platform according to what when it suits them to to do that. Um, as for the Overton window, uh, yeah, he's allowing an Overton window that basically ends at it's none of our business. No advocacy for the people of Gaza is allowed on the Daily Wire. Obviously, Matt Walsh's stance on this is that it's none of our business. We should have nothing to do with it. That's as far left as you are yes. allowed to go at the Daily Wire. Although Matt Walsh, it's interesting that, uh, and I assume he mentioned Matt Walsh before Matt Walsh took a stand against Greg Abbott. Uh, Matt Walsh right. has, uh, can he does a, a, a weekly cancellation. And this week he canceled Greg Abbott for creating or attempting to create safe speech zones where pro-Palestinian protest cannot be uh, exercised on their college campuses, I think. Um, right. And, and uh, Walsh exoriated him for that as violating free speech. So Matt Walsh is a complicated figure. You know, I, as somebody who's spoken a lot about transgender medicine and its contradictions and its lack of safety or science, I've drawn on his reporting a lot, and I've always found it to be accurate. There are a lot of things that he believes that I do not. There are a lot of things, uh, you know, I, I find rather abhorrent in his belief system. But I have, I have never really doubted that he is a person of principle, that he actually believes what he's saying. And um, I don't think it's a coincidence that he came out right when Candace Owens got fired and decided to take a stand like that. He's not a stupid guy. He He's tweaking them. He's tweaking them. I mean, to do that this week, that's almost daring them 
to fire him. And I would read into that. Maybe I'm wrong. He didn't like what happened with Candace Owens. And also another problem with this formulation. Okay, man, if Matt Walsh tomorrow turned around and came out as a, uh, you know, liberal drag queen, you could maybe make an argument that that completely conflicts with your brand. But Candace Owens is, is a conservative who disagrees right. with you on one particular issue. We're not talking about somebody whose whole brand has transformed into something, you know, just completely in, incompatible with the Daily Wire. So you're just not going to tolerate dissent on this issue. You're just like the people you've been attacking for years. They're exactly the same way. There are certain third rails, certain issues you absolutely cannot dissent on or you are cast out. And you did the same thing to Candace Owens. And as this poster points out, you've kind of undermined your reason for existing in the course of that. Um, so this is Alexandros Marinos. First, Shapiro makes the argument that Daily Wire is a publisher, like a magazine or a newspaper, not a platform like locals. Interestingly, he implies that the Daily Wire was subsidizing Candace Owens. This would imply they were taking a financial loss to have her there. Um, Shapiro and Rubin, however, have also been massive critics of cancel culture. How did cancel culture get its name? From a campaign to cancel the Colbert Report over a tweet. Much of cancel culture is about inflicting professional harm for bad opinions. God, do you remember when Stephen Colbert was a guy that they'd want to cancel? Wow. Right, yeah. Wow. That's like the Stone Age. I forgot about that uh, before he became a disgusting shell. Uh, this is a shambolic performance that brings the contradictions of the whole Daily Wire experiment to a head. They were supposed to be a platform for conservative hosts. They were supposed to help those hosts break through to the various platforms. Now we suddenly find out that the hosts at the Daily Wire are subject to strong editorial positions on a wide variety of topics. I am not raising a free speech issue, but I am raising a brand honesty issue. When they took in Gina Carano, who was fired for unpopular opinions, was their stance that Disney had a right to define its, quote, range of acceptable opinions, or did they decry it as cancel culture? Selecting the hosts is one thing, making it clear that the hosts have to stay within the lines acceptable to, let's be honest here, Ben Shapiro is another. From a neutral business advice point of view, the Daily Wire makes a brand promise that it has now forsaken. And as such, will henceforth be seen as yet another media organization whose hosts cannot be trusted to be speaking their mind. Perhaps Daily Wire signed a check they could not cash, but the fact of the matter is that they have done the exact thing they criticized many others for, the thing they got big and successful criticizing. And this is uh, Dave Smith. It's amazing how many people rose to fame by opposing identity politics and cancel culture, who have become the biggest censorship-loving identitarians since a war involving Israel broke out. And that's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. As soon as this war broke out, much to our disappointment, you found out how many of these people are completely full of shit. What they didn't like were opinions that they agreed with being canceled. They were, they were never against cancellation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that thing that Shapiro said about halfway through that video, well, you know, our hosts can say whatever they want within a certain Overton window. Well, th that's that's exactly almost to the letter what YouTube says. We right. encourage a broad spectrum of opinions and values on our platform. We all know what that means, right? It means within a certain Overton window. Right. And if you step outside of that, even if you don't know you're stepping outside of that, they can shit can you. And that's what happened here. Yeah, no, you could say whatever you want as long as you're okay with Israel bombing Al Shifa Hospital. Sorry, why am I blurry? Yeah, what happened there? Um, there well, there. yeah, we <laughs> were looking the other day. What's his name? Clavin? We did the whole video about. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the Christ is King the guy. The Christ is thing. Yeah, uh, th this is really just blowing apart the contradictions in the whole Daily Wire brand. 
I mean, I, I, I could definitely see Walsh going next based on the video he did this week. If that's not a shot across the bow, I don't know what he could possibly have been thinking to do that literally the week that this Candace Owen thing, uh, Candace Owens thing blew up. Now, I believe Candace Owens will be just fine. If anything, she'll probably be better off uh, professionally. Walsh, does he have that kind of uh, appeal? Does he fit that kind of a niche? I don't know. But again, I don't know. It, Yesterday was trans visibility day. He'll be eating off that for years. He probably well, cleaned well, up at, yesterday. at least until next year. And then there will be yeah. another one. So yeah, yeah. there'll be another one. That's true. You got to build might, in. You might right, be right. Exactly. But yeah, it won't I mean, fall we, on Easter next year. It will, you know, like this was the big year. This, this, you know? this was, this was a big one for him. He, he, yeah. should, he should do, he should, he should do a follow-up movie. What is Easter? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, what is Easter? Yeah. Hey, there's still tickets available in Stockholm, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, British Columbia, Denver, Ashland, Virginia, and Athens, Georgia. See you there. Mm-hmm.